Hey there guys, good morning. Welcome back to Cop Talk. Today we're going to be talking about off-duty security jobs. All right, specifically level three and level four off-duty security jobs and how you can get those licenses, right? So as a peace officer, a full-time police officer with benefits, you can already work a whole slew of off-duty security jobs. This, in, this includes, you know, being a bouncer at a bar, being armed security for a jewelry, store even sitting over at Whataburger collecting you know money there's there's a whole slew of security jobs you can do what a lot of police officers don't do is go ahead and get those civilian certifications for those jobs because you don't need them to work them as a police officer right but if you ever decide to leave the law enforcement field it'd be super beneficial for you to just go ahead and get those licenses and get them on your resume get them on your you know in your paperwork because you can go work a whole host of things then with or without your police license, right? And, it's, and the state of Texas makes it insanely easy to do so. So uh, case in point, the Texas Administrative Code here actually has an entire exemption for peace officers. So right here, it labels, it lists out the training requirements for level two, level three, and level four. Um, level two being unarmed security, level three being armed commission security, and level four being personal protection officers right aka bodyguards and that is personal protection is where you can make a lot of money if you can find a decent client and you maintain a good reputation and you have the right skill set and right mindset some of those jobs can pay up to 100 200 dollars an hour now the peace officer exemption you have to be a full-time commissioned law enforcement officer with an agency at working at least 32 hours a week and receiving the benefits of your department, right? Now, you are exempted from level three training requirements upon a submission to the department, a sworn affidavit attesting to the applicant's review and familiar uh, familiarity with the act and related administrative rules. Basically saying, you understand what this is saying, and whenever you're filling out your application, you can become a level three and get your license just by being a police officer. So if it's that easy, right? If you're just submitting an application, basically saying, I'm a police officer and I get this, I don't need to go to the school for it, you can just go ahead and get that license real easy. And if you have um, military experience, whenever you're filling it out, they actually have a, a um, military discount. So I think for mine, I ended up paying $7. And you get a little pocket card and everything. So even if you leave law enforcement and you maintain that that security license, you can still go work security jobs. Probably the same security jobs you're working. You can't work them as a police officer because you're no longer a police officer, but you can work them as a personal protection officer or a level three commissioned uh, armed guard. Now, to start any of this, you have to start an application with TOPS. TOPS is the Texas Online Private Security Portal, right? It's pretty easy. Uh, you just go to tops.portal.texas.gov. And then if you don't have an application already, oh, this website also allows you to search who has a license. So if you got some guy saying he's security, this is great. This is a great resource for law enforcement. If you have a guy claiming that he's security for X event or whatever, and you don't believe a word he's saying, you just go ahead and click on licensees, type in his first and last name, and it'll bring up anybody, right? So, start individual application. Um, unless you're starting a business, in which case, congratulations to you. I don't have that kind of time or money just yet. But anyway, individual application. You click on here, and you choose which kind of application you're starting. Armed. This includes the commissioned... Uh, personal protection officer and then these governmental law of authority this is basically like some political subdivisions can hire people for security and things like that and it's pretty oddly specific but they have that in there because they're armed uh, instructor registration for alarm instructor ppo instructor level three instructor and then unarmed this includes private investigator locksmith alarm installer uh, a whole a whole ton of slew of stuff so anyway if you select armed right you click next it'll take you to this page right here 
what are you going for? And I, you have to submit a new registration or application rather for each thing that you're trying to get. So if you're going for a level two and a level three and a level four, like I am, you're gonna have to submit a level two, level three and a level four application. And you're gonna have to pay for each, for each one. But if you have a level four, you can, I, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but if you have a level four, I believe you can perform level three and level two actions. So anyway here, if you're gonna, okay, so I've already selected personal protection officer here. That's what I'm gonna go for. Then you have to fill out your personal information, including like your ID type, like, uh, okay, is it gonna be a driver's license, military ID, state ID, US passport? And then, you know, obviously, uh, it's not even displaying that I can see it on my other screen for whatever reason it's not shown right here. But yeah, Texas is the first choice because it always is. And then your ID number and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you do have to give your social. I know some people are iffy about that, but it is a website ran by the government. So, you know, take that for what you will. Uh, I can't go into the next page because I have to offer all this information. Anyway, when you get to the next one, it's going to ask for employment information. Here's the catch. If you are filing for armed, any armed position that includes personal protection officer or uh, commission security, whatever the case may be, you have to provide, somebody has to be carrying your license, some security company. So um, not just any security company, it has to be either a class A or a class C security company. A class B is just guard company. Guard companies cannot employ, well, that, I take that back. If you're a level four, if you're going for level three, you can just have a, a class B security company carry your license. If you're a level four, you have to have either an investigative company, somebody who performs guard actions and investigations, or a um, like a government contractor company, like, you know, used to be Blackwater, GRS, things like that. Somebody like that has to carry your license because it's a higher class of license. Once you have that employment information, that includes a security number, like their, their security uh, registration number, the business name, and when you're employed, they will contact that employer, make sure that you are an actual employee of the company, and then they will also confirm your contact information, your military status, your peace officer status, and then, you know, your couple of questions and blah, blah, blah. But at that point, it'll go to review for uh, DPS, PSB, and then they will either approve or disapprove. You do have to submit some documents. Uh, you should be able to skip the, the fingerprint portion because your fingerprints are already on file for the, uh, you know, Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. Hopefully your fingerprints haven't changed. <laughs> I don't think they really do. And at that point, you can submit your application. Now, you can do that with every single license that they offer here. I recommend doing that because, like I said, if you ever get out of law enforcement for whatever reason, you have a fallback. You have something that you already know how to do and you can continue to do, but with a civilian license. And they can really help. Also on job applications, it looks good if you have these certifications. Like, it doesn't hurt to have more certifications, right? So that is how you apply on tops. Like I said, you have the exemption. You might as well go do it. Um, the continuing education is easy, way easier than, than police, you know, for straight law enforcement. And it, it, it's, you might as well do it. The state of Texas makes it so easy, minus the finding an employer to carry your license and put you on their insurance kind of deal. But if you can do it basically for cheap or free, you might as well just do it and put it, you know, have something else in your pocket that you can use. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped out a lot. Um, if you have any other questions about personal security detachments, uh, personal security operations, personal protective officer, anything like that, go ahead and, and leave it down in the comments below. Or write me an email or something. I'm more than willing to help. Um, I just couldn't find this information really anywhere else. So I'm, I'm laying it out here. Um, if you guys need anything else from me, I appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe, 
um, for future videos. I like to do reviews and spread information and do whatever I can to help. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment, a like, whatever, that'd be greatly appreciated. If not, I don't care. I don't get paid for this. So anyway, guys, I will see you in the next one. And I appreciate you for joining me today. And I wish you all a wonderful day, whatever day it is for you. Unfortunately, it's only my Tuesday. So uh, it sucks for me. But I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.